Tom here from Orange Systems, and it is the year of the Linux desktop where everyone's going to move away from Windows and over to something like Pop! OS, right? Well, okay, I say that jokingly and very tongue-in-cheek, but honestly, I want to talk about System76, Pop! OS, and why I think it's a great distribution, and specifically the 2104 edition that has been recently released. Recently, it's been out for a little while, but I've been using it because I wanted to provide my review from a usage standpoint, not just a, hey, I just loaded it standpoint. Now, for those of you that don't know, I've been running Ubuntu on my desktop for a long time. Then I did switch a little bit to KD Neon, but overall, I settled on a few years ago pop os and i've been happy ever since i've been doing in place upgrades on my systems now i wanted to bring this up because we're going to talk about you know using linux full-time as i do and as i have been for years and my perspectives on that uh, we'll also cover maybe why you may not want to use linux but those are a few different details and i also want to talk a lot about pop os and why if you're deciding maybe you've had enough of all the well, issues that may come from Windows and you want to take a look at getting into the Linux world and what distribution may be right for you, this is a pretty solid choice, I believe, and I'll make my case for that shortly. Before we dive into those details, if you'd like to learn more about me or my company, head over to lawrencesystems.com. If you'd like to hire a short project, there's a hire us button right at the top. If you want to support this channel in other ways, there's affiliate links down below to get you deals and discounts on products and services we talk about on the channel, which do include some of these shirts with cats on them and fun things like that. All that's linked down below. Now, System76. Who are they? And what is Pop! OS? So this is the version I'm running right now is Pop! OS 2104. And let's talk about naming scheme real quick. Pop! OS follows the Ubuntu naming scheme, naming scheme, and it is also based on Ubuntu 2104. Now, 21 represents the year, 04 represents the month in the way Ubuntu names it. System76 is following Ubuntu's naming scheme, but actually released it after April of 2021, but this makes it simple to understand what the base is when you're doing it. That's an important thing because if you don't understand what the base is, it can be a little bit harder to troubleshoot. And let me back up a little bit about what I mean by the base. With it being based on Ubuntu, that makes it a really solid platform. And if you're asking, why would you take something that's based on Ubuntu? Wouldn't you go to the original? Well, that's where System76 comes in and puts a little bit more polish and more workflow options. So Ubuntu has a great workflow and uses GNOME. System76 takes GNOME and really puts a lot of pizzazz on it to make it a more enhanced and more customizable experience. And that's what the new, as they refer to it, cosmic desktop is really a much more enhanced experience. Now, System76 is the company that builds the open source Pop! OS. They are a hardware vendor that sells laptops and desktops, specifically Linux focused. And when you buy their laptops or desktops, one of the options is either to get them with Ubuntu or their System76. And they make really nice, very high-end Linux systems that are really outstanding. Like the build quality and everything is quite well. I'll leave a link over to Jay from Lunar Linux TV. He's covered these before and done some in-depth reviews on some of their hardware. I've also reviewed some of it that will all be linked down below back over to Pop! OS. They wanted to provide a better experience than you get with stock Ubuntu, and that's where Pop! OS comes in. Now, streamline your workflow. Workflow customization is something I think is really important. I'm mixed on this particular feature called stacking. Jay's a big fan of it from Learn Linux TV, and he's reviewed it. I'm less a fan of it, but it's pretty cool. It's, once again, one of the reasons that Linux can be troublesome for people coming from the Windows world before they move over to something like Pop! OS or Ubuntu, going, what do you mean there's multiple ways to do things? Because in the way that Microsoft has always done it, it's predefined. In the major changes in your workflow or how you integrate with applications and how you use the system comes from major version changes in Windows, but that version change Windows really kind of brings you down only to that workflow. And it's very, the word I probably could use is homogenized across the whole platform where everyone just kind of does it the same way. Linux is a little bit more of a learning curve because they give you all these different customizations. But that's also one of the reasons I enjoy it so much because I can customize things the way I want them to work. And one thing that Pop! OS does a nice job of is offering all these different like keyboard shortcuts for managing your workflow and applications and how you interact with the system. This sounds a little bit daunting, it, like when you see all these different keyboard shortcuts, but they quickly become muscle memory once you're using them. And you can do things like Alt-Tab, 
and jump between things. And yes, this is a cool looking old retro terminal that, uh, yeah, I just thought it'd be kind of cool. Makes it look like a CRT. I don't have any real practical use case other than it presents cool on the screen here. Now, back to talking how this works. There are a few different keys like super key D that I have set up that will allow me to go between the different virtual workspaces. This is another enhancement that you get with Pop OS and the way they've implemented it is a really smooth workflow for virtual workspaces. Yes, that does work in Ubuntu as well. We're going to focus on Pop OS and how they have it implemented though. This allows me to kind of choose between applications, choose between things that I have open and switch between them. And Alt Tab, like I said, works fine. So I can do this. The downside is of course, because I have multiple Chrome windows open. Do I want this one or that one? I like the little previews it gives me, but being able just to tab between things is easy but feels old school when you can just do the application switching such as this right here like if i wanted to jump over to slack right here and this is once again hitting the super key now let's actually jump into the settings menu here we'll go here to system settings and this is where you can change what that does so right now the super key does the launcher or I can say, hey, do the workspaces, but I like it as super key D, so we leave it like that. Or we can actually have it so it brings up all the applications to launch. Now, one thing that I'll say is a little weird to me, instead of your normal, like you may be used to a start bar at the bottom in the Windows world, when you launch applications, they go like this and kind of show up as these large icons, but of course they're searchable here. So if I wanted to launch something like VirtualBox, I can then find it and then it will find other subsets there or just go like this and open up virtual box so it's pretty easy enough to kind of get started with it uh, when you're coming from a windows world i also have this set to hide at the bottom which is the which is the dock at the bottom here you i have the dock enabled and once again you can customize you know always visible or they have what they refer to as intelligent hide but i could also say always make that dock visible and be down there at the bottom. Now you can switch from applications around on the dock. So you notice they're all launched here. So I can go to like to the calculator. I can pull Slack back up. I can go here to the terminal window that I have open or the cool retro terminal that I have here. So it does work in a similar way. And of course, this shows all the applications. This shows all the workspaces. And that shows the launcher. So there's different ways to get to things, but I kind of like the auto hide. And once you learn the keyboard shortcuts, makes it a lot easier. Now, doing this, and let me jump back over and show you the workspaces. They seem a little complex because maybe you're not used to using multiple workspaces, but they actually make this relatively easy. So let's go ahead and take our calculator. And uh, where did my calculator go? Well, I can just search for it like this. So we'll pull up calculator. There it is. One of the things I really like is when I did that, it also moved the window focus to be the calculator. So I dragged it to a new workspace. It's all by its lonesome here. Let's go back to the Firefox one and we'll hit the super key and type calc again. It brings me right to focus on the application I wanted and puts me so the cursor's in there. I know it sounds simple, like you see this alt tab, but when you have a lot of windows open, this is where I mentioned that workflow. And one of the things that you can run is so many different applications at the same time, you kind of can get lost in that. And I think they've done a great job of making it so you can find it. Just how Chrome has finally added, you know, easy way to search all the different Chrome tabs that you have open uh, to be able to find them when you're one of those people, which I occasionally am, who have many, many tabs open. Yes, you can now search for all the different applications you have open and be able to just jump between them either this way or have a virtual workspace environment. Now, the nice thing also about the virtual workspace environments is we can build one kind of as needed. And as so much happens in the tech world, you get disrupted or someone has a question and you need to kind of move somewhere clean to start doing some type of dive into whatever someone interrupted you on, but you don't want to break the workflow you had for everything else you had open. This is one of the other advantages I really feel is with the uh, multiple workspaces is being able to go, all right, let me just get this other workspace. Let me open up. Um, uh, we'll put the Libre writer right here and let's uh, dive into that so we can, all right, now we can start this document here. All right. And then when the person's done bothering me, we're going to go hit over here or back over here, what we we're talking about with these shortcuts. And it's this window I want on top. So it's not just searching to the workspace bring this back on top, bring me back to what I was doing. And the same thing works for when I'm doing my workflows for things like Caden Live. So let's go ahead and do this, go down here, and then uh, choose that workspace, Caden Live, which is actually the video editor I use for this. 
and uh, pull it up in this particular space. So it's going to launch. It's going to be right here. And then we can see Caden Live video editing going on here. This is here. There's my document I was writing. There's this. And let's talk about these System76 back over here. And once you get used to this, it's really nice. Now, I've been using Pop OS for a long time, and the Cosmic Desktop brings forth that a little bit more polish on there. Now, one thing I haven't really taken the time to learn is all the gesture commands. This is one of those things that uh, Pop! OS has as well as be able to use touchpad and gesture. I, I've figured a few of them out. It's kind of a nice way they've integrated this. It's where I want to learn even more for people. It's gonna be helpful that are using not just a trackpad here, but if you wanna get a trackpad add-on in addition to your mouse. Yes, you can use both at the same time. So you can reach over to your trackpad, make gestures to move these windows around in a certain way. I'm so partial to the keyboard shortcuts. But once again, this goes back to the flexibility that you're going to get with some of the Linux desktop. Now, displays and multi-monitor, this is something really clever that I like the way Pop! OS handles this really, really well. Now, pretty much even my laptop, desktop, my desktop um, where I do most of the editing is a triple monitor setup. But the system here is going to be, and we'll go to settings again, settings menu, and let's go in my displays. And by the way, you can search your settings like any control panel. So go here and we'll just jump to displays because, you know, as there's a lot of options in here, you want to get to the right one. It's set to mirror. Now, I have it set to mirror when it plugs into the recording studio here. When it plugs into my secondary monitor when it's at home, it recognizes and moves all the applications to that secondary monitor by extending the display to it. But when it senses that it's plugged into the display, essentially that it detects for the recording, it then says, nope, that one is set to mirror. It remembers everything on a per device you plugged it into setting. So the last setting I use, which being mirror for this one and being extend on my external monitor, works perfectly fine. It understands it and it remembers what applications were on which window. So I can quickly take this plug this into my second screen when I get back home and it goes back into being a dual display and it says, you know, you had this window over here and this window over here and remembers the settings that it was extended, not that, not a uh, mirrored display. This is one of those things that becomes really nice about the way Linux handles all that. And uh, it really shows how mature and how the product has really come along because earlier in the days when I did switch to Linux, these things were just really difficult to do and you spend a lot of time messing with it now it's really so easy there's not any command lines i had to do to do that this is an out of the box way the system works now let's talk about applications and this is where i think the pop shop is really making it a lot easier for people to adopt into linux and it just keeps getting better with each version picture it very much like the application stores that you have for modern phones whether it's the google play store the apple store or you know insert store that you may be using that's not on those specifically, but you get the concept, being able to have all the applications here. And if I wanted to load something, either a game, graphics, uh, there's a lot of different options on here. Now it's becoming a very popular platform for developers because we have things like Android Studio available in here. And you may notice there's a couple different ways to load things. And this one in particular comes as a flat pack. Flat packs are, instead of trying to load the application with all of its dependencies that are needed, flat packs kind of wrap all the things that an application needs into a single file. It's actually very uh, interesting way to handle it. I actually am a big fan of this because it allows you not to have to worry about collision, so to speak, between some incompatible apps. This is specifically a problem in the video editing world. And one of the reasons I use Caden Live for my video editing, and I use it as a flat pack because it's not going to interfere with maybe another tool I might be using that has a different dependency on one of the different codecs that are needed. So we won't get too deep into that. We'll just say it's a good thing. But all these different editors and audio communication development. And as I mentioned earlier, with Slack being open, Slack being one of the popular business tools, I don't have any problems from a business standpoint using this from a day-to-day -day usage. But, and as much as we know Steam is in there, I know games are gonna be one of the first hangups for the average end user. And this is where I'll say, maybe this is not always a time to run Linux. And I bring this up because someone may call me out on it in the comments and they would be correct to say, Tom, don't you have a Windows computer at home? Yes. And I will admit, yes, for games, it just runs better because the games I like aren't quite good yet on Linux. And that's what it comes down to. And the same thing with, I'm a huge open source advocate. I'm a massive fan of the Linux desktop. And I was there during the painful days. And now I would say it's pretty you know, easy to switch to, but switching business clients over to it, not 
quite as easy because yes, there's a lot of pain with them because a line of business applications and user training and uh, yeah, and Microsoft, it's what people are used to using. So it's going to take a while before we really get to the year of the Linux desktop before we really see Microsoft replaced. But with more and more things being web-based applications, the operating system matters a little bit less. Uh, but don't say that too much around a really diehard Linux enthusiast. I mean, I am one, but I'm also someone who realistically manages Windows computers. So I know it's going to be a long time for we really see on desktop. But overall, my thoughts are if you are starting out and you would like to get into using Linux, I think the Pop! OS is a wonderful choice. I'm running it right now in my ThinkPad L480. So even though it's supported and will ship on a System76 system, it does work on a multitude of hardware, pretty much any hardware that Ubuntu will support. Also, being based on Ubuntu, if you're having any trouble figuring something out in the learning curve of maybe you're new to Linux, System76 Pop! OS gives you that extra polish on the desktop, but maintains that compatibility that, well, 99% of the time you can search for Ubuntu 2104 and how to do something, and those same instructions will apply to Pop! OS. You don't necessarily need to search for how to do something in Pop! OS unless you're doing something very interface specific for the changes that Pop! OS put on top of known, kind of skinned it. But my overall, if you want to get started in Linux, I think it's a great distribution. I think this latest version of it is pretty outstanding and allows a lot of flexibility for how you want to use it. And uh, so those are my thoughts on Pop! OS. I loaded it. It's the day it came out, all my desktops, uh, laptops, every one of them, whether they're the office ones or even, you know, like this older, I forget what model this one was. This is a... Uh, Lenovo X250 that you sometimes see in some of the videos. I've loaded on this and a few others in the office here, and we love it. We think it's been great. The update does take a little while to do, but uh, it's actually been kind of impressive to think that I've been running it for years, which is in place upgrades for each time. A matter of fact, I've even swapped hardware where I take the hard drive out, put it in a different laptop, and yeah, now I have a new laptop and it doesn't uh, it doesn't complain much about hardware switching. All right, I'll leave links to uh, Jay, who also did a review from Learn Linux TV on Pop! OS and uh, his thoughts as well. All right, thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of this video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from this channel, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. To hire a share project, head over to lawrencesystems.com and click on the Hire Us button right at the top. To help this channel out in other ways, there is a join button here for YouTube and a Patreon page where your support is greatly appreciated. For deals, discounts, and offers, check out our affiliate links in the descriptions of all of our videos, including a link to our shirt store where we have a wide variety of shirts and new designs come out, well, randomly, so check back frequently. And finally, our forums. Forums.lawrencesystems.com is where you can have a more in-depth discussion about this video and other tech topics covered on this channel. Thank you again, and we look forward to hearing from you. In the meantime, check out some of our other videos.